Greetings, comrade, and welcome to the Eastern Border. You know, I haven't read much comics in my day. I have read one, though, and uh, that was Transmetropolitan. The lead character was someone called Spider Jerusalem, who was based upon Andres Thompson, my personal hero, in journalism. I don't really know how good as a person he was, actually. But, um, well, because of this fandom that I had, which drove me to journalism, I had a, had a mouse pad, and it said, if you're miserable, edgy, and tired, then that's a good mood for journalism. I hope it is so, because I am all three. See, I'm at Odessa now. If you've uh, watched my vlogs, to which I post links all over the place, and if you've, uh, you know, listened to the previous episode in Kia, which was an interview with Mark, then you should know that at this point, and I honestly speaking do not give a damn about the audio quality of this, because I just want to sleep so bad, then you know I'm in Odessa right now. And we spent yesterday basically uh, filming the bomb church, went in, saw a lot of truly tragic sights, it stunned me personally. And it was pretty difficult. We tried to get a good camera, some battery stuff for, for Victor and everything, but, you know, went there, did things. Then we went to eat in a local um, Greek place. Drank some ozo, had a nice meal, and then I remembered that there's one thing that I should have done here, which is that I don't remember exactly which person, but someone on Twitter, I think a Patreon of mine, had asked me that uh, the relatives come from very small village nearby here on the border of Moldova and Ukraine. And it's like north, uh, northwest from northwest from Odessa. And I went there because I thought, well, you know what? The things that I do for my listeners. I wanted to go there, wanted to see what's happening and just, you know, check on the whole thing. And by the way, the, the whole economy runs on smuggling. So we went there and there's like Transnistria across the, the, the thing. You know, you can see the river and then Transnistria is on their side and we're just there. Our passports get checked a couple of times, one time on the checkpoint. Then some guys with uh, motor rollers come back and check us and everything. And we go there and, um, you know, I, I film a short video, check in on the place, seeing that it's not bombed and everything. And then uh, Victor out there together with Anthony from um, Ukraine with that high podcast who's with us here to in Odessa. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Victor decides that he wants to take some good shots at Transnistria on the other side of the river. And, you know, we have our journalist accreditations, we have everything, right? But, uh, you know, he just walks, drives a bit closer, like from this asphalted road, drives a bit closer to the, to the river. And, yeah, I was supposed to be talking all about the church and how it was emotional and how he spoke with the, with the priest and how a bomb directly struck the altar. I have lots of pictures about, about that on Twitter and how this itself is rebuilding and being quite alive. But... And also, by the way, about Girkin's wife, who is now writing a letter to Putin to say that Putin is a garant of the, garant of the Constitution, guarantor. Yeah, how she, how she, he should liberate Putin. Sorry, Girkin. That's never going to happen, and it's just weird knowing that everything what Girkin has been telling about this stuff. Yeah, so we go there, I try to film some things, and we're about on our way back. Victor's just a bit, you know, filming Anthony, saying some, some things for the movie and everything. Um, yeah, in the meantime, by the way, I'm getting worried because they're, you know, uh, they have to go quite a far away. There's somewhat of a road there, kind of a building, everything. Now, um, what happened next uh, stunned me, really. And uh, yeah, you better pay attention because I'm not going to re-record this episode no matter what happens. You see, an old angry man, a local, plops up, naked, wearing just underpants, nothing but underpants, and starts yelling at us and threatening to shoot us. And we are confused because we literally were just three minutes to go check by our papers and everything. They saw like we're not, you know, guys showed us their like thing that they're from the border guards. Everything's fine. Just, you know, checking our papers, letting just moving us through. Everything's fine. This guy pops up, yells at us, threatens to shoot us. And we are confused. And I'm trying to be, you know, negotiating with things, asking where's his papers, because he's obviously super drunk. And, um, you know, but he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't let us out at all. He says, you need special permits, you need everything. Uh, turns out we did need special permits. But, you know, I'll get to that point later. So what happens is he calls the border guards first. And the guy who has literally checked our passport comes in, you know, who checked our documents with the bikers. And this guy just says, no, no, well, we try to explain to this guy that our documents were just checked, everything was in order. And he just says, nope, 
don't believe you, you might be Russian spies, which is funny if you think about it. And I literally just went there to take a photo of Transnistria and we thought it would be like 15 minutes there, you know, taking a look around, coming back because all day was spent actually filming in Odessa. And then the border guard who checked us on the motorbikes, right? He comes next to us and he shows him his papers, tells us, you know, it's fine. It's like, just let these guys go. It's whatever. And his wife also comes out, the naked guy's wife comes out. And uh, yeah, and, and she tells like, come on, let it go. But he wouldn't. Apparently he's been hurt because he's from Liman, which has been bombed and he's drunk and he's angry and he doesn't trust us. He doesn't trust our documents, doesn't trust our pests, doesn't trust anything we have to say. He doesn't even trust the border guard because apparently the border guard is someone new from who hasn't been living in this village for a long time. This is important, by the way. We'll come into play later. So he doesn't trust the documents, calls some other guy whom he knows, calls the police, gets into confrontation with us and with the border guard, is very rude towards us and like totally confrontational. Then more border guards arrive. They also want to make us, they, they want to make him just let us go. And he says, nope, don't trust you, don't believe you, you are all new guys. Which, by the way, they were. Then the cops arrive. Apparently he has some of his friends and those friends call the, like, he's escalating the situation to insanity and beyond. And that's about 10 p.m. in the evening? Like, the curfew starts at, at the midnight, but this is about 10 p.m. in the evening. And by the way, if this isn't gonzo journalism, what you're getting here, I don't know what is. This is the most gonzo stuff that I've been to in my whole life, and I've seen a lot. So, these guys arrive, and this is getting serious, because we're seeing guys with guns, guns being pointed at us, everyone's stressed and nervous, and I'm the only one that speaks Russian. Is everyone here speaks Russian, by the way. And I'm dealing with the situation as best as I can. I'm showing everything, showing our car papers, which, by the way, the old guy didn't believe as well. And he's really, really, you know, naked, angry, and yelling at us. Uh, somewhere in this whole mix, by the way, my, my GoPro just disappeared. I think the, the guy took it, maybe. I, I don't know. It, it's somewhere out there, you know. Um, please, uh, dear listeners, if you can, uh, click that donate button uh, on, on our homepage. Or become our patron so that I can, you know, afford to quickly grab myself a new GoPro with a new stick. Otherwise, I won't be able to film my vlogs any further. Um, I think I'm just going to grab one after after I sleep. That's going to hurt my budget, but that is what it is. Oh, and also, uh, already four listeners have sent me a couple of euros, like 20, 30 or something, and to buy them hats from Ukraine. Because I have these Ukrainian hats, like there's a black one and there's there's a gray one. We're dealing with that too. You can join our Discord and, and you know, or just message me on Twitter. Everything will be sorted out there. Just let me know if you want the hats. But enough about the hats and enough about how uh, I managed to lose, lose my girlfriend in the whole situation. And everyone arrives. And there were like three people there. Me, Anthony, and Victor, right? And then there's this angry guy yelling at us. And he's yelling at the new cops as well and everyone. Because, you know, interesting thing, which we noticed only after this as we were driving home, because this is about an hour's drive from, from Odessa up there, up, up north, northwest. So you see, we're all being, you know, finally the guy's... Get, he's being rude even to the cops. He doesn't care. He knows, like, only the locals, and he's very paranoid about Russian spies. Also, we'll come into the story later a bit. So we are taken, then, to the border guard station. I won't tell you which one exactly, because again, I promise not to. They, of course, by the way, confiscated our telephones and went through them as well. Because apparently, the first thing that happened to us, we were taken to a local classroom of this totally underfunded, really underfunded border guard thing. And the first thing that happened was like we were introduced to... Uh, by the way, these guys all also think I don't know any Ukrainian at all. Even though, you know, I don't speak Ukrainian, but I can understand some, so I got what was happening. We were vetted, vetted for about two hours by intelligence guys. Intelligence officers who asked us where we're from, what's the mood, asked us to write explanations what we're doing there. In English, by the way, and other, uh, any language that we chose. I think, you know, he was going by the old KGB school. He needed to check if we actually speak English, if we are who we are. Proper vetting things that the old KGB used to do. I had to translate into Russian everything that I wrote in English, everything of Anthony and Victor wrote in English. I had to answer all the questions. Everyone was worried. I was trying to keep my cool. By the way, air raids, air raids, alar alarms are going off. And also, at that point, it's like over midnight already, and we know that we will just not be coming out of this. Because curfew until 5 a.m. But after about two hours, you know, about midnight, slightly over midnight, these guys decide that, yes, we are indeed journalists. Yes, we have accreditation. They checked everything. They checked our car. 
really just ransacked through all of our bags and everything. At that, at that point, my GoPro was gone already. He didn't even care. Then we're sitting there, and at least we now know, like, they're, they're not staring at and pointing guns at us. This is the point where all these guys leave. And we're being treated by a military guy, like the border guard person, and a cop. And this is the first thing that I noticed over there in the thing. They're underfunded, but again, the locals did not trust the border guards or the local cops that much because they were all new guys. And this is important because, like, on the border between Poland and Ukraine, there used to be, like, older guys who did not care that much, who was, like, totally safe. On this border with Transnistria, this shows how seriously they take this border because they send guys from a newer generation. Everyone's, like, younger than me. Everyone's, like, about Viktor's age, 24, 25, something like that. That's because these guys are not corrupt. These guys are those who believe in Ukraine. Just I spoke with them in Russia and I tried to be friends with them. Try to keep my cool in all this situation because what else could I do? I've seen worse as well in my life. Had to be as cool as possible for all these hours. And this is, what, 8 a.m. when I'm recording this? So I haven't slept at all, of course. I'll go to sleep after I finish recording this, basically. So these guys obviously are from other regions so that they wouldn't have local ties so that they would actually catch the smugglers. They did everything by the book. And uh, if anyone says Ukraine is corrupt, maybe where there are local ties or older people. These guys, by the book. And it was painful by the book. We had to translate everything, give proper protocols and everything. But even those like intelligence guys who didn't even speak with the old man, yeah, I mean, I, I passed their vetting because, well, yes, we are not terrorists and we were honest. And I thought, you know... It would be stupid to pretend to be someone else again. I just shotgunned all of my info, gave them all the links, showed them everything, showed them all the papers. Like I, I was just me, like I'm now on this podcast. I was like this for so many hours under terrible stress. Oh my, that was hardcore for me. Really difficult though, and the guys also held up very well. Um, props for them, you know, try to tr- communicate through me because... They managed to maybe plop up for an hour or two, but I had to translate all the documentation. But yeah, these guys are the new ones sent in because they are really cracking down on corruption, especially on that border, on Transnistria, which is taken seriously. Because I later, as I later found out, everyone there is also super scared because Russian missiles have come from that area. They have been firing. There have been area alarms, by the way, firing all over us. The last one plopped in about a minute after we were finally released in our car, which was totally ransacked through, by the way, and checked, and everything was like thoroughly searched by the documents. And we had written proper statements, proper protocols, and we had to do like all the documentation, but, you know, they're trying to fight the corruption, but they also stop about six to seven squads of people trying to get from Ukraine to Transnistria then to inside the EU to smuggle cigarettes and like they stop smuggles from the other side, agents and everything, they are really busy there. And they, by the way, don't get the cars that people send them and they, you know, their chief, who also was like about slightly younger than me, he also gave us uh, his Instagram of his brother who's now serving and they're collecting money for their stuff, but border guards are underfunded yet honest, not corrupt. But apparently, well, we managed to strike a liking with... Um, like I said, intelligence, police, and border guards. Intelligence guys loved us. They they basically said, yeah, yeah, they're fine to the documents. They're good. So we got promptly vetted. Neat. We got assigned a the lowest possible fee for our um, dastardly crime of not seeing any signs that it's prohibited there to film, even if you have uh, your press accreditation. We need to pay about $3 each. That's okay. We found out that's super early. Like $3 each. Nothing, really. Because that's the minimum thing. If they wanted to give us like $22 each at the beginning. They didn't. Because the intelligence guys told them, no, 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 these guys, you know, it's basically a kind of a parking fine if you mess that up, basically. But then the documentation started. I had to translate not only... The, and they did all the Soviet style by hand. And the, like, the cop guy is sitting on his laptop and typing, typing down, typing, 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 all this nonsense, right? All the documents, all the papers, they, they photoed everything we had. Checked everything and done by the book, 100%. But it was so slow because they had to translate, for example, the eastern border into Russian and then into Ukrainian and type it out by hand. And my name and where was I born and where was I, where is my official, like, where is my official workplace and explaining all this stuff was a mess and a pain. And they also checked, you know, what's your family status? And, and, and like, where do you work? Like, all these data that will never get used. They also took like our fingerprints and everything. And that took so long. And that took hours upon hours. And I'm just sitting there and being worried and I'm translating for everyone. But again, 
I took a good look at this thing. They take pride in this. And again, they're not all lo closely related to locals. This is, by the way, how I found out about Transnistria stuff. During the war, they're very careful. And I know that that area, yeah, that's, what the, that's where they sent rotated guys, by the way, from the front lines. You can get rotated into the border guards thing through territorial defense. And the cops and the border guards don't share any systems. Therefore, the cop was writing on a laptop and the border guard was just typing it out two pages very slowly, meticulously to all of us for the protocol, which is kind of interesting because those systems do not really clash with each other. And the whole place was, well, it was warm, but, you know, we get taken outside in some sort of a pet patio or something. And then, yeah, then the documentation was over after a long while. Like a very long while after everything was checked, everything was double checked, and I was questioned about literally everything that I could possibly have been checked for. Then we get to, to, we get taken inside again. Everything's super professional. There is no corruption, and I understand why. Like the local guy, who probably knew some local cop that who used to smuggle things, does not trust these guys because apparently I, I think that you know his smuggling business because he lived literally on on the river there was a bit disrupted, so to speak, and he didn't trust anyone, and he was paranoid, and I think also traumatized of the war. And then, well, we sort of ish, at about four, we get told, oh, no, we're just no rush, we're not going to let you out, even though we technically, by law, with our press badges, can go out in the curfew, but no one cares. Then there's a time in the chief guy's office where he didn't know, like, I guess normally from Transnistrian smugglers, he doesn't do this, but as we were getting such tiny fines, we are basically told to give our fingerprints and the, the fingerprint machine doesn't work and I have to translate to everyone and by, by that point we're so tired and miserable that it's just sad and it's, now and then there are alarms. We're not also given like coffee or like we're, we're given coffee at the beginning and the very end and some water too. And when I went to the toilet, by the way, uh, the guard guy also sat by us. So at that point I'm starting to noticing all sorts of things about how they're all young, about the smugglers and they're like asking me questions too like, what punishment would you get in Latvia and EU before this? Because they were stunned that the intelligence guys apparently somehow through the cops, through the judge, I, I don't even know. They called everyone in this little village. Like, we, I think, organized a massive weird action event for everyone over there because they were, like, younger. They probably hadn't even spoken with English-speaking foreigners from the EU. They had to translate everything, especially since Anthony is a U.S. citizen. That's even worse because he's from U.S. I'm from Latvia and Victor's from Germany. It's, they had a fun night, and we thought, you know, three bucks is three bucks, just for each of us, it's like ten bucks. Oh, yeah, then they told us that we physically, after we pay this in the bank, either today, not going to happen, we're just going to sleep, or tomorrow, quite likely, are going to have to physically drive back that one hour to there to give them back the papers, the receipts from the bank. And that is beyond stupid, of course. But yeah, digitalization apparently hasn't hit border control that much, which is why we also had issues getting in the country with our car that we we're going to donate to to the police, sorry, to, to the army. And it was a bit insane. But yeah, apparently they catch six to seven groups of people smuggling stuff around there. They are very careful about, like, the Russian border guards. And I say Russian border guards because in Transnistria, in that little kind of segment, they're not even claiming to be separatists or, or Moldovans. No, no, no. They're Russian soldiers with Russian chevrons and everything, as I was told, because I managed, by the end of it, you know, Anthony and Victor just passed out for a bit. I managed to talk to him about the situation there. And he's angry because they actually, you know, it's kind of like basement-y and very kind of secure. It was one of the safest places to be during an air raid. At least that was good. If only I could, like, have slept a bit and be in a bit more calm situation. And if only I had still my GoPro, which would be nice, but stuff happens after all. But yeah, after that, they hold us up to about like five. But they're like not interested in letting us go. Like they're like, uh, I hear one of them saying to Ukrainian, "Oh, just keep them then if we, keep them in for like a half an hour more." Uh, when, well, well, the sun gets up because they're too tired to drive in this hard fog, and they do this for our own good because yeah, Victor, who's driving all this way, he was just so tired and everything. And then we finally got out and drove about an hour to here, but it was crazy because. Now I can for sure say that the Ukrainian border guard is understaffed and they're trying to deal with corruption massively by sending the new guys in. There's massive trafficking and the old systems of this whole trust thing, this whole situation where people could smuggle each other, those are being disrupted. It's an interesting means of how to do this. But everything is done by the book and they lack digitalization in those specific areas. 
Also, intelligence guys, yeah, you know, they uh, use old KGB methods. They're very well trained, very friendly. You know, I've been I've been a journalist for nine years. It it takes me a lot of. To, it, it, I understand what they're doing and who these guys are. I thought, by the way, Victor and and, and Anthony also kind of noticed them that they were intelligence guys, but probably not. They just thought they were regular cops. But you know, I can hear Ukrainian. I can understand what's happening. The, at least you know we were promptly vetted. Because the things that we wrote, by the way, they, they in standard explanations outside of the forms, if one explanation was written for the intelligence that the cops also used, but basically it was just about our fluency in English and are we really friends, are like really just checking if we're not Russians. So I can tell you for sure that uh, Ukrainian Secret Service guys, very talented, also quite young, about my age too. So interesting. Learned quite a lot about how their border system works in general. But that was... A crazy adventure, and I'm really glad that I somehow managed to be in a safe spot during all this. If if like if this is the only thing that we get from this, because I'm I'll be sleeping until 3 p.m. today. Yeah, this was worth it. Lots of experiences, and maybe you know, maybe I'll include more information in later episodes. It's just that this has been going on for 20 minutes, and I really want to sleep right now. And if anyone of you want to help me with the GoPro thing, please do. And thanks to all the patrons for who are, for supporting me and. I'll be dealing with a lot of stuff. We want to go to Kokovka Dam, like not the dam itself, but the deflooded areas, because apparently there are some older towns which are now, you know, no longer underwater. A lot of things that I want to do. But first, I'm going to take a bit of a nap. So this is how I managed to get, spend a whole night arrested by the border guards. It was a bit crazy. I wouldn't recommend anyone repeating this adventure, unless you're prepared for quite a lot of stress, and you probably should also speak. Russian or Ukrainian. At any rate, the Svidanya Tavarishi, and remember, happiness, as always, is mandatory.